What now for Texas Tech basketball? You've got Mark Adams out and players are entering the portal. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I am R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast for the latest breaking news and rumors. When it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. In today's video, we're going to talk about a lot of what's going on generally right now in Texas Tech athletics, specifically in men's basketball, because this is arguably the most critical time in this program's history in terms of sustaining the foundational level success that you have accrued over the past six to seven years. This is arguably, in my opinion, the second most important hire that Kirby Hocutt will have to make. The last one being Joey McGuire, because you had to get football right and you have to get this one right for men's basketball because of all the resources that you poured into it. For those that haven't heard it yet, let's read over the press release from Texas Tech in terms of Mark Adams stepping down. Mark Adams has stepped down as the head coach of the Texas Tech men's basketball program. This follows the university suspension of Adams and its inquiry related to his interactions with his players and staff. Following this inquiry, Texas Tech Director of Athletics, Kirby Hocutt determined that the racially insensitive comment was unintentional and an isolated incident. Following the comment, Adams immediately apologized to the team. This from Coach Adams. My lifelong goal was to help and be a positive influence on my players and be part of the Texas Tech men's basketball team, Adams said. However, both the university and I believe this incident has become a distraction for the Texas Tech men's basketball team and the university, which I care about so deeply. That wasn't the only news that came out on Wednesday night after Texas Tech lost in the first round of the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City to the West Virginia Mountaineers, Fardaz Amac also entered the portal, which you probably know by now. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I don't think he's going to be the last one to do it. I would not be surprised if by Monday, March 13th, when the portal officially opens, you've got a few more guys from Texas Tech already in it. But this is what Fardaz had to say. This from Tipton Edits, who made the graphic for Fardaz in terms of him announcing going into the portal. Thank you, Texas Tech, for everything. With the injury and missing 80% of the season, coming back was my goal and not being fully healthy all season was disappointing. Now with the coaching change and issues off the court with the staff, I will be entering the transfer portal. I've been told that there's a possibility if the right hire is made that Fardos can come back. I don't know what that right hire is. That is all up to Fardos at this point. But right now, as it stands, he is officially in the portal. But in this video, I really kind of wanted to go over certain things in terms of what I think Texas Tech men's basketball needs, right? And the first question I want to ask y'all, and let me know down in the comments below, what type of coach do you want Texas Tech to hire? Do you want more of the CEO Joey McGuire type? Do you want an offensive minded head coach, a defensive minded head coach? Do you want them to go the older route or the younger route? Let me know down in the comments below. It'll be one of the comments down there. So just reply to it. Because for me, again, I mentioned it to begin the video. This is the second most important hire in Texas Tech, maybe athletics history, at least in modern Texas Tech athletics program history because you have to think of what's gone on with this basketball program the past seven to eight years you were really one missed foul call away on Davide Moretti from hanging a banner saying you were the national champions um, you go to the elite eight the year prior you're you know really one missed layup away in the in the COVID year in terms of when everybody was isolated and the championship was up there in the state of Indiana um from going to four Sweet 16s or better. So you think about what's going on here with Texas Tech, and I truly believe this hire has to go right for multiple reasons, starting with this, what I just mentioned with the winning. You've, you've set a standard now. You have to keep that standard and grow upon it if you're Texas Tech. And if you don't, you'll be going back to the dark ages. Second of all, you can't let this happen because of how this fan base has responded. This is obviously a football first program in terms of the athletic program. I get it. But basketball, this is a basketball crazy fan base. And it's been proven when you win here, they go crazy for it. And you've got the dollars backing it now. You've got the donors backing it. You have all of these elements in place for you to be a top 15 program year in and year out. And I do think with the right hire, they can sustain that. But the, the issue is this, 
who is the right hire? And there will be a search committee for this. Kirby Hillcutt has already mentioned that. Who is on the search committee? We're not too sure yet. I would probably guess it's similar to last one. You got the Tony Batiz of the world as whether, you know, Dusty Wombles on there as well and other, you know, prominent figures within the men's basketball program, right? I'm interested to see the direction they go because in my opinion, I think there's really only two options you can go here. Um, don't go the older route, first and foremost. And that has nothing to do with Mark Adams or anything like that. I think you need to go the younger route. And by younger, I mean, you know, like 50s, you know, mid 40s, 50s, maybe even low 40s if you find the right guy. And the reason being is this. I feel right now a lot of the coaches that are younger are more equipped and knowledgeable with what's going on at the high school level in terms of the AAU circuit and everything like that. And I think you need a guy, especially in a talent-rich state, in the state of Texas, where you've got Dallas and Houston, two of the hotbeds in the country, when it comes to talent at, on the basketball scene, right? You have to have a guy that is influential enough to go in to any high school in the state of Texas and they are respected and they know that that high school head coach knows what they are about, right? You have to have that. And I think that Texas Tech has plenty of options for that. I think Grant McCaslin is one of those guys. I think Paul Mills can be one of those guys. Um, you know, I think that there's plenty of guys that I listed in the prior video on the channel here in terms of the top 10 guys right now on the list for Texas Tech, in my opinion, that can do that. Whether you're, you know, the Alvin Brooks at uh, Baylor, even Jacus at Baylor, or even Kellen Sampson down at Houston, right? There's plenty of guys that you can target for that. And I also think you can go the big name route. And don't be surprised if there's some names that you are just not expecting Texas Tech to be linked to, right? I've heard that they are going to try and throw some money at some dudes. Now, will they take it and use Texas Tech or use Texas Tech as leverage, I should say? It's probably the latter. They'll probably just use Texas Tech as leverage. Um, and that's, you know, good business on their part, but also good business by Texas Tech to go after one of those highly recognizable names and see what you can do. It doesn't hurt to try, right? And I think that that's where Texas Tech needs to go in this search is try and go after everything. You know, have your resources out there and don't leave any stone unturned because last time, it really felt like this was Mark Adams and Darvin Ham, right? Like you had some mentions of Grant McCaslin. Um, I know Joe Golding was mentioned a little bit, but let's face it. It really felt like it was going to be Mark Adams or Darvin Ham. Obviously, it went to Mark Adams. This time around, you have to go out there and just really get a lay of the land. Don't leave any stone unturned and check every available coach you want to fit your system and see what they could potentially bring and figure out which direction you want to go. Personally, me, I'm thinking the younger route in that, you know, 40 to 50 range. Go get a guy that knows the state of Texas really well or just knows recruiting or is an absolutely elite winner. Doesn't matter the level. An absolutely elite winner. I'm looking at you, Ben McCollum. But I think that that's where Texas Tech is going to go. And on the transfer portal front, obviously Fardoz is in there. That was kind of a shock. It gave me flashbacks to... Terrence Shannon Jr. the year prior, but this time Fardoz knew it was happening. Last year, Terrence Shannon didn't know it was happening while he was on the plane. Um, I do expect some more guys here before March 13th to enter the portal. When exactly will that happen? I'm not exactly sure. And the guys that will be in there, I mean, again, I've said this in prior videos. If you ask me, I think every guy should probably put their name in the portal just so they can have options. Right, like options are a good thing in this time when you don't know who the next head coach is going to be. You can love Texas Tech, but it's more of a, hey, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more security here if you're the player. All right, that's what I've got for today, but I want, I want y'all to let me know again, what type of coach do you want Texas Tech to hire? A CEO, an offensive coach, a defensive-minded head coach, older, younger? Let me know down in the comments below. And trust me, we'll have plenty of videos coming out daily here talking about Texas Tech men's basketball as this is really the talk of Texas Tech athletics right now. Who will be the next head coach of Texas Tech? Who will be on the team next year from this past season's team? Who's going to enter the transfer portal? There's a lot of questions to be answered, and uh, we'll be uh, here to help you guys out and answer them the best we can right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.